everybody's happy, they're shouting showers, and then somebody comes along and cuts her damn baby out of the gut. In the quaint town of New Boston, Texas, life seems serene for Reagan Simmons Hancock, a happily pregnant mother of one and gifted wedding photographer whose camera captured moments of love and happiness. A few days ago, she immortalized the joyous union of expecting parents, one of which was Taylor Parker, the 27-year-old bride. Reagan and Taylor shared a commonality, documenting their experiences as they both embarked on the beautiful path of motherhood. Their heartfelt posts on Facebook resonated with friends and family, who eagerly joined them in cherishing the unborn lives growing within their wombs. Yet, amidst the blissful moments and the eager anticipation of their little one's arrival, the veil of destiny concealed a heart-wrenching twist, a cruel turn that would shatter the idyllic calm of Reagan's world. On an otherwise ordinary afternoon of October 9th, 2020, the sun cast a warm glow over Reagan's tranquil home in the heart of their tight-knit town. Taylor, wearing a troubled countenance, knocked on Reagan's door, claiming her own shower had broken and asking to use Reagan's. Without a second thought, Reagan kindly welcomed her inside completely unaware of the storm that lurked beneath Taylor's seemingly innocent request. Once inside the comfort of Reagan's home, the air seemed to change. Taylor's demeanor shifted abruptly, revealing a brewing rage that had been hidden from the world. In a heart-stopping moment, the nightmare began to unfold, forever haunting the once serene ambiance of their hometown. Reagan was alone with her young child when Taylor struck. In a moment of madness, Fueled by inexplicable motives, Taylor then committed the unthinkable. Heinous acts that no one could fathom. She murdered Reagan and then cut the underdeveloped baby out of Reagan's body. The story takes a chilling turn as we fast forward to 12 p.m. on the same day. Taylor was found on the side of the road, covered in blood, clutching a newborn baby. Frantic and desperate, she demanded to be taken to a specific hospital one hour away, adamantly refusing any other medical assistance. Within the hospital's sterile halls, unease pervaded the air as Taylor's arrival sent a ripple of apprehension through the medical staff. Covered in blood and cradling a newborn baby, her presence was anything but ordinary. The doctors and nurses exchanged cautious glances, determined not to let her slip away before uncovering the mystery she carried. The local police were promptly notified, their vigilant presence ensuring that Taylor remained within the confines of the hospital, her every move under careful scrutiny. Shortly after arrival, medical professionals observed signs that Taylor's claims might not hold water. As their suspicions grew, tests were performed, revealing a dark reality that no one was prepared to confront. This is a big deal. Yeah. Okay, yes, are you ready? I'm coming. She can't leave. Do not let her out that door. So she shows no signs. You won't. You can't check for hemorrhaging. It's a hormone that is uh -huh. secreted by the placenta. Okay. And if there's a baby in there, the HCG is what the hormone that mandates going and getting the nutrients and bringing it to baby. Okay. So it's in mama's blood, mama's urine, mama's everything. Okay. And it stays up for six weeks. Okay. All right. It's taken off. You don't want no more. Huh? You don't want no part of this. He took off. He's the OBGYN. Yeah, I was going to go called up for resuscitating the baby. Oh, what did we step into? Oh, it's a uh, interesting. I so, I think it's going to be that. She's in there. She refuses to have a vaginal check to make sure she's not hemorrhaging. They've done an ultrasound and eight CG and it doesn't show that she's been pregnant. Okay. They have the placenta. Where is she? She is in the room. She's on the phone now with her boyfriend, so I'll try to sidetrack her a little bit. With an unwavering sense of determination and a hint of caution, the police launched into their questioning, acutely aware of the gravity of the situation. Every subtle nuance of their body hinted at an eagerness to uncover the truth behind the unsettling events that had sent shockwaves through their community. Taylor Parker. Taylor, hey, my name's Chad Sansby. I'm a, I'm a OSBI agent up here, and I heard you brought your baby in. Did you give birth on the side of the road or something? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where was that here? McCurtain County? 
No, it was in DeKalb. DeKalb down in Texas? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So, so what happened this morning? Did you school in the labor on the side of the road? No, me and my, I was supposed to ride with my fiance and we, we sell, uh, we own a whole bunch facility and we were gonna come through here but I was having contractions and stuff and wasn't feeling good so I stayed at home and told him we would just meet here after he dropped the hogs at seven and he got tied up I mean he's on his way okay um now how did you get here did you drive yourself no an ambulance ambulance brought me yeah it's like that their body language a symphony of cues painted a vivid picture of their resolve The subtle shifts in their posture, the occasional nods of understanding, and the casual raise of an eyebrow, all served as a dance of communication, conveying a shared sense of purpose. The nurses said that you weren't going to let the doctor check you to make sure you weren't hemorrhaging or anything. They did an ultrasound. The hemorrhaging is the bleeding, Um, whether you're passing clots or not passing clots. They, it's really good to have you checked for that because I know I was passing massive clots and they were about to start giving me blood. That's why they're wanting to check, to check how, you know, any damage and check to make sure you're not bleeding inside internally. That's why they're wanting to make sure. That's okay. That's fine. I didn't know it was a big deal not to want the guy to do that. No, I mean, if you don't want to, that's up to you, but that's why they're wanting to check, just to make sure. Make sure you're okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, you've got blood all over you and all over your fingernails, and I mean, that's a, that's a pretty intense thing. Yeah. It's scary. You want to make sure you're okay. As Taylor's questioning progressed, her tone of voice became an undeniable reflection of the turmoil within her. The timber wavered, revealing a nervous tremor that underscored her mounting anxiety. With every word, her voice seemed to spike in pitch, betraying the palpable panic that gripped her heart. The questions seemed to peel back layers of her composure, exposing the raw vulnerability she desperately tried to conceal. Worried inflections crept into her sentences, as if each question posed threatened to unravel the fragile threads of her carefully guarded secrets. Her voice quivered, as if unable to escape the weight of her own lies and the torturous truth she struggled to accept. There's something wrong for them bringing me over here? What did you have? Did you have a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl. Okay. Did you have a name? Clancy Gale. Clancy Gale. That's a nice name. It is a nice name. Do you have any other children? I have two. Do you? How old? Emerson's 10 and Trey's 6. Taylor, here's the deal. Um, I'm just going to be up front with you. I've been talking to the DA down in uh, Bowie County, and they've been working on a case down there. And we know that you had a hysterectomy some time back, and that you claimed to be pregnant for a while, but it really weren't. So we're trying to figure out where this baby came from. But you didn't get birth this morning. What do you... What do you mean? So I just said, you didn't get birth this morning. And we want to know where this baby came from. Uh, so what happened? I just told y'all what happened. Okay. What's the doctor going to find when he comes in and checks you? Is he going to find you to escape birth? The officer could have really dropped the ball here. Despite Taylor's right to revoke consent to certain examinations, she surprisingly cooperated, even after having the consequences laid out for her. Uh, they can tell. When he looks, he can tell in about a second if you get birth or not. Okay. With somber determination, the police delicately broached the horrifying information they held, convinced that Taylor must somehow be involved. Their approach was tender, aiming to cultivate trust and coax honesty from her reluctant lips. But the facade of gentleness quickly crumbled, giving way to a more assertive stance as they pushed for answers. Hey, <clears throat> found a woman this morning on the side of the road, and her baby had been removed from her body. And then you show up with a baby, and the information on this, you've had a, you've had a hysterectomy. There's no way you could have been pregnant. Even though you've been telling people for a while you've been pregnant, that there's no way you could have been pregnant. 
I didn't hurt anybody on the side of the road. Well, I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying that there's a there's a woman that had her baby removed from her body. Her body's found on the side of the road. I didn't say you did. I just want to know what happened, where this baby came from. Who was the lady? Do you know who she is? I don't know what lady you're talking about. Okay. The doctor's unwavering findings loomed like an indomitable shadow over the proceedings, erasing any lingering shreds of doubt. The certainty they had sought was now a chilling reality, a truth that none of them could have fully prepared for, despite their anticipation. It was a stark reminder of the unnerving depths that human actions could descend to, shattering any illusions of predictability and plunging them deeper into the haunting enigma that was Taylor's inexplicable tale. Surely doesn't look like a baby came out of there. Uh, it doesn't look like she had a baby. It doesn't? No. Okay. Does not look like she had a baby there. Essentially what we have is we have a dead woman down in Texas. And you took the baby out of her. Which caused her to die. And my question is, is Taylor a cold murderer? Or is it something else? I mean, sometimes people have, you know, they go through depression and, uh, you know, some mental issues and things. Causes things, causes good people to make bad choices. Right? And that's kind of where I'm here at today. I knew that doctor would never find anything. Because I knew you had. I already knew. I already know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things I asked, I already know the answer to before I asked. I tell you, most of the people, are going to assume the worst. They're going to assume you're an evil person and that you just butchered this lady and left her to ride on the side of the road. So you still her baby. And I don't think that was the case. I mean, you don't seem like that type of person. I, I didn't kill anybody. Where'd this baby come from? We're past all of that. Taylor, we're past that. I did not kill anybody. I didn't kill anybody. So was she alive when you left? I wasn't with any, I wasn't with her. Right now, the DA down there who I've talked to believes that you're a cold-blooded killer and that you plotted for the last eight months to kill, to murder this woman and steal her baby. The weight of their words hung heavily in the air and Taylor's eyes widened in disbelief, unable to escape the certainty that now engulfed her. The evidence they held will leave no room for escape, no refuge in denial, and no hiding from the haunting truth. And right now, the evidence is there. They can prove it without a shadow of a doubt that that's what happened. They can prove that you murdered that woman. How heinous is it? Some woman, you know, everybody's happy, they have showers, and then somebody comes along and cuts her damn baby out of the gut. That's what we got right now, and that's what you need to understand. That's the point where we're at. We're past all this nonsense about, I wasn't there, I didn't kill nobody. We're past all of that. We know it, we know you did it. There's no doubt whatsoever. You didn't hurt her. Are you sad she's dead? Is it the deal you just wanted a baby so bad that, that it just kind of overpowered your brain and everything? Uh, it's been hurting. Yeah, it's been hurting. I remember pulling up. Did she say something to you to make you mad or something? Or, or, or what happened? She grabbed the hug of me and told me that I was a, a liar. Did you try to fight back? We both fought back. We both hit each other. Okay, all right. Let me get, uh, she hit her head on the table. She hit her head on the table. Okay. That's okay. Hey, that stuff happens sometimes, you know? I didn't move her. You didn't move her. Okay. So she was still in her house? Okay. She, uh, when she hit her head, did you think she died? Did you just try to save the baby? Yeah. I mean, I really wanted the baby. I understand that. That's okay. Well, that, and that shows what a good person you are. 
So you tried to you tried to save the baby. So did you? Did you I guess you got the baby out of it. You like a C-section on it. You don't remember. So how did you go from her laying there with her head hit to you have a baby? In your hand? Did you take anything over there with you? I mean, some people carry knives, especially up here. But did you have a knife or a race blade or anything like that? There's some knife in my in my purse, but were you inside her house or outside her house? We started outside, then we were inside. Fighting, arguing. arguing. Okay. And what were you inside the house or outside the house when the when you actually went when it turned physical? She hit you or you hit her? She hit me outside. She hit you outside. Okay. Did she run back into the house or something? Did you go in after her or what happened then? She hits you outside and what happened? She grabbed a hold of my hair. It shoved me in the garage. Because I remember her hollering, Jennifer. Who's Jennifer? I don't know. That was just the name she was calling her. Now, what's her name again? Um, the lady you went over to see? Um, you go into the living room. You fight, y'all fight some more? Continue you know, I know that. I know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. That's okay. That's why I'm, I listen, Taylor. Oh, God. If I believe that, no. I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be spending time talking to you. Oh, shit. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it, right? Why did this happen, right? So, why did she call you a liar? What, what was that about? The baby. Her baby. What about it? Why would she call you a liar about the baby? I think she got me tip of it right there. Okay. I just remember hitting her. But she had a knife though. Okay. Yeah, but I don't. I did I don't know why she grabbed it. I don't, I don't know why I would ever hurt her. But it's not because I I've never hurt anybody. Well, I can believe that. <laughs> I don't have a record. I, I, believe, I can believe that. She hits you with she picks up like, apparently picks up something, hits you with something heavy. You're not sure what it was. And then and there was blood. Did you stick her with the knife? Or once no, you she get, fell with the knife because I shoved her. Okay, so she gets the knife back from you? We I we both had it in our hands a few times. Oh, I don't, wow. Okay, I'm just trying to get it out of my head, you know what I mean? So. She told me that I was going to rot and that she'd kill me okay. if I touched her again. And, uh, and she's got the knife. Did she fall on the knife? Is that what you believe, or is that what you know, or or you don't know? She had to have because I didn't. You didn't stab. I her. didn't stab her. Okay, that's fine. So afterwards, did it look like she'd been like the knife? She hit? grabs. She grabs something and started smacking herself with it and told me that they would believe I did it. Oh, okay. So she started hitting herself with something. Do you remember cutting it open? to get the baby out. Did you have much trouble getting it up, cutting it open? You didn't? Okay. So, so you take the baby out of her stomach. Is that right? It, it, it fell out while she was pushing. Mm -hmm. And it come out. It come out of her vagina? No. Oh. Or out of her stomach? Okay. Right. It was, she was still in the sack. Oh, okay. All right. So it comes out of her stomach and it's still in the sack. Did you, did you have to did you have to pull the sack apart to get the baby out? Yeah, to pull it open, uh, turn her over, and started 
smacking her back. Mm -hmm. Wade said that you've been telling him you were pregnant for a while, for the last eight months. Why, why, why did you tell her Wade you were pregnant? It's just you wishful thinking, and, and you really just want to be pregnant that bad. Okay. Well, what was the deal there? Did you feel movement? Made you think you were pregnant? Something's wrong with me. The revelation pierced the hearts of all present. The life of the innocent baby had been cut tragically short. It was later revealed that Taylor had been faking her own pregnancy. As the consequences of her heinous act unfolded, Taylor faced a solemn reckoning. Found guilty of capital murder, she was handed a sentence that echoed the gravity of her deeds, death. A dark chapter had drawn to a close, but the haunting echoes of the tale lingered on, forever imprinted on the conscience of those who bore witness to its agonizing development. The story leaves us questioning what could lead someone to commit such an atrocious act. Do you believe Taylor received the sentence she deserved? Did Reagan's family find justice? The psychological complexities behind Taylor's actions may never be fully understood. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us as we explored this heart-wrenching story. Remember to cherish the moments of joy and love, for life can take unexpected turns. If you found this video impactful, please like and share it, and subscribe for more compelling content. Until next time, stay safe and take care.